Okay, so um, send out an email this week um, for the exam on Friday, and the location is going to be in room 110 of Powell Hall. <clears throat> and Pop, this is Powell Hall, which is, if you look at the back of this building, you should be able to see it. It's just across the parking lot over there. So it's going to be important to be in that room for 8.30 so we can get started on time because um, then we have it until 10.30. Uh, again, the exam is 90 questions. Uh, <clears throat> it's, once it starts on the computer, the timer will start on it to get the mask up, please. Um, you have the opportunity to skip questions and go back. Um, when you have gone through the exam one time, you'll get a list of all 90 questions that indicates whether you answered them or not. Um, you can mark some for review as you're going on. If you're not sure, you can go back and check those. You can go back and check all 90 questions if you want. Um, <clears throat> You can't accidentally submit the exam. Okay, it's not possible. Um, occasionally, a computer will freeze up. We'll have to start it, but it'll have kept all the answers that you already put in. Um, <clears throat> so what what will happen is at the end, when you're finished as an individual, you raise your hand. I'll come over. Um, I'll check that you answered all my questions and I'll type my code in. Since I hit submit, it's going to say you either pass or you fail. That's all that you'll find out in the exam. Um, <clears throat> once everybody's finished, probably afternoon, I'll get, um, I'll get the scores for every individual and um, Get that sent out to you. So, uh, you being 75% in order to pass the exam and earn the certification. Um, if you don't pass it, but you score at least a 65%, you have the opportunity to retake the exam. Um, it will cost another $30 to buy another exam access code. It's kind of one time. Um, any questions? Yes. Yeah, any type of photo or ID. So, any college ID or graduate license will uh, work for your ID. So, you really don't want to bring a whole lot of stuff with you if you don't have to. You are not going to be allowed to have anything other than your exam access code um, with you. So many of you have created a serve safe account. Okay, it's quite a few. Please do that before the exam because it takes maybe up to five minutes to, um, to do that. Uh, Okay, so Powell, it's one of the business buildings. Or Powell is 44, White is 55 or 58. So if you're coming off of the quad, you can walk through White to get over to Powell. 110 is toward the back of the building. Um, the computer lab is close to where the this little courtyard is. It's a little just a little bit inside there. So I've got <clears throat> another review. This is going to be a little bit different. These are not all multiple questions. I have to watch the
Okay, I want to um, start going over these. Um, <clears throat> the files that I have have the questions and the answers in them, um, so I can email them out to everybody after after we go over these. So um, the first um, part is chapter six questions, flow of food preparations. Um, true or false, coolers are designed to cool hot food quickly. That's false. Cook a whole turkey to minimum temperature of 155 for 15 seconds. False, whole needs 165. First step in cooling TCS food is to cool it from 135 to 70 within three hours. False, that has to be within two hours. Um, fish cooked in the microwave must be cooked to a minimum internal temperature of 145. False, any, any um, of those foods you know, cooked in the microwave need to reach 165. Okay, the four acceptable methods of thawing food, and I'm just going to read these off for you. You can thaw food in a cooler. You can thaw it under drinkable water at 70 degrees or lower. You can thaw it in a microwave, or you can thaw it as part of the cooking process. Okay, each food, item, each food item we're going to match with the um, correct letter in space provided. So, swordfish steaks, that should be letter C. Whole chicken is going to be letter A for the 165. Pork chops, also letter C. Ground beef patties would be letter B. And then the glazed carrots for hot holding would be letter E. Any questions on those? Okay. Cooling food. What is one way you can correctly cool a large pot of chili? Okay. So this is how the answer reads in the book, because there are several different ways you can answer this. It all starts with dividing it into smaller containers. And then you can place it in an ice water bath and stir it, or stir the chili with ice paddles. Um, place it, place it in a blast chiller. Um, it could also be made with less water than the recipe calls for, and then you can add ice to it at the end to help to cool it faster. Those are all the ones on chapter six. Chapter seven is talking about the flow of food for service. Um, cold, cold TCS food at an internal temperature of 41 or lower. True. This is, yeah, need to do that. Okay, number two. Hold hot TCS food at a temperature of 120 or higher. False, it needs to be 135. Three, your operation may be allowed to hold chicken salad at room temperature if the operation has an approved mm -hmm. procedure and the salad has a label specifying that it must be thrown out after eight hours. Pardon me? Okay, there's, there's at least two false things in here. <laughs> um, you don't need approved written procedure and you can't leave it out for eight hours. You can leave cold food out for up to six hours as long as what? As long as it, the temperature doesn't go over 70 degrees for food, the food's temperature. Okay. Or when holding TCS food for service, the internal temperature must be checked at least every four hours. Mm -hmm. That's true. 
And if it's in the type of the zone, you have to throw it out. But if you check it every two hours, you have time to either repeat it um, if it's below 135 or really cool things, as long as it's not above 70 degrees, if it's a cold food. Okay. In each picture, describe what the server is doing wrong. Um, and this all has to do with bare hand contact. So they're using their bare hands to put ice into a glass. Um, you always want to use a scoop when you're um, handling ice. Um, they're touching the um, portion of the spoon that goes into the guest's mouth. Um, so you always want to handle it by the handle of the um, tableware. And with this coffee cup, they're sticking their finger inside the coffee cup, which you never want to do. You always want to hold it from the outside of the cup. Why shouldn't the server use glass or use a glass to scoop ice? Um, because there's a possibility that ice may break um, and go into the ice bin. Uh, to when serving food, how many serving utensils must be available? One for each um, item being served. Eight. Active managerial control focuses on managing the risk factors for food going illness. True. And the purpose of a food safety management system is to prevent foodborne illness. Also true. Three, identifying risk is the first step in implementing active managerial control. True. Okay. List the five common risk factors responsible for foodborne illness. I'll give you one. Practicing poor personal hygiene. Holding food at incorrect temperatures. Okay. Yes. But it, like on the exam, it will be worded this way. Using contaminated equipment. The other two are purchasing food from unsafe sources and failing to cook food correctly. So list two of the six steps in implementing active managerial control. So we do off the first, these are in order. Um, identifying risk, monitor your critical activities, take corrective action, um, management oversight, training, actually these are not in order, training their employees and then reevaluate the system um, periodically. Okay. So place an X next to each item that is an FDA public health intervention. There's going to be more than one answer. Oh, no, I meant the number three, okay. Um, what about number one? One, yes. Two, yes. Three, yes. Four, yes. Five, yes. One through five are yes. Six is no.
Okay, and what does HACCP stand for? Okay, so I'm going to put them on the first row. We got it. Um, hazard analysis, critical control point. It's a little bit harder when you don't have four choices. And then the exam is going to have four choices. Okay, so chapter five purchasing, receiving, and storage. True or false? You can store food in any durable container that you can cover. False. You can't store it in uh, um, copper containers or um, pewter containers. Um, you can't store it in a container that held chemicals. Uh, number two, arrange food stored by its use by date so you can use the oldest food first. Three. Three, you should reject the delivery of frozen steaks covered in ice crystals. That is also true. Okay, so we're going to fill out this food label on Sunday, August 3rd. You prep melon balls at 2 o'clock. Use some for a fruit salad and store the rest. Write out the label for the food that you stored. So, what is the use by date? Here in August 9th. Okay, so you have August 9th in here. Um, you would write in 2 o'clock p.m. And then at the bottom, you would actually put in the word smell on balls. Okay. Fill in the blank. Score food at least how many inches off the floor? Six inches. Store raw meat, poultry, and seafood, blank, ready to eat food. Um, if separate is the best option, you could put that. Um, but you could also put the word below. Okay. Purchase food from approved reputable suppliers. Okay. Store ready to eat TCS food that is prepared on site for no more than seven days. Okay. And then top to bottom, how are we going to store these things? Get the cake on top. Ground beef in the middle and then the poultry on the bottom. Okay. Chapter 10 Surfaces must be sanitized before they are cleaned. False. Okay, we have to clean them, rinse them, sanitize them, and air dry. Um, number two, cleaning reduces the number of pathogens on the surface to safe levels. False. That would be what sanitation does, or sanitizing does. Cleaning removes visible dirt. Um, utensils cleaned and sanitized in a three compartment sink should be dried with a clean towel. False. Everything should be air dried. Soaking items for 30 seconds in water at least 171 degrees is an acceptable way to sanitize items. True. You just have to wear insulated gloves to go all the way up your arm because you'd be cooking your arms in that temperature of water. Okay. List four instances when a food contact surface must be cleaned and sanitized. Again, I'm going to read these. Um, 
after it's used. Um, before food handlers start working with a different type of food. After handling raw TCS fruits and vegetables, for example, between cutting melons and leafy greens. And after four hours, if the items are in constant use. The order that we're going to put these in when we're cleaning and sanitizing stationary equipment. The first thing we're going to do is unplug the equipment. Second is take the removable parts off, wash, rinse, and sanitize them either in a pre based sink or in a dishwasher if you can. Number three is going to be scrape or remove food from the equipment surface. Number four is wash the equipment surfaces. Number five is rinse the equipment surfaces with clean water. Six is sanitize the equipment surfaces. And then the last one is allow the surfaces to air dry. So from top to bottom, it would be 2165734. List five factors that affect a sanitizer's effectiveness. Okay. So the concentration of the sanitizer, how many parts per million are in the solution. Um, the temperature of the water, the contact time, the water hardness, and the last one is the pH of the water. Okay, so that is the last of it. Any questions on content or what we're doing on Friday? So we will not be in this room Friday. This class will meet to take the final exam over in Powell. And um, that will be our last class. We will not meet next Monday. Uh, so, um, if you have any questions in the meantime, shoot me an email or give me a call.